To continue the installation of reporting services, there's just one more detail that we need to take care of, and that's to install that reporting services add-in on the other SharePoint servers. So when we installed reporting services on SP App 2, which is where the reporting services service app will really run, we clicked two boxes, and one was for the core service code, and the other one was for the add-in. We need to install that same add-in on the other reporting service servers as well. This add-in contains a few things that are typically going to be needed. In this environment, I need it on both the SP App 1 because that's where Central Admin is going to run, and we can't configure the service application unless that add-in is run on the server where Central Admin runs. The other server is the web front end, and it's going to have reporting services uh, web parts, and those web parts are also contained within this add-in. So essentially, we'll run this add-in on both. We could install that by running the full SQL Server DVD and selecting it from there, but that would take a long time compared to just running the quick add-in that we can get from the feature pack. So I've put the URL here for you, so you can download it from there if you're using SQL 2012 SP1. So I'm going to run this add-in on both of these servers. First I'll come to SP App 1, and so we'll just run the RS SharePoint MSI, and accept the license agreement. Next, install. And that's pretty much a fire and forget, so we'll just let that run. While that's running, I will flip over to the web server, do exactly the same thing. And when that's complete, we just get the completion acknowledgement. We'll click finish on that, and that's pretty much it. And on the web server as well. So then with that done, we can go ahead and go back to central administration and configure reporting services to run on the environment. And this configuration will be very similar to what we've done with Excel services and performance point services. After we've installed the RS SharePoint MSI on the app server and the web server, the menu option will then become available within Central Admin to configure reporting services. So if you've come this far and you go into Central Admin to configure reporting services and you go to the new menu and it's not there, you probably missed a step. So make sure you run that MSI. We're going to do very much the same thing that we've been doing with Excel services, performance point services. We're going to use the BI services application pool. We'll store the content databases on the uh, SPDB1 server, just as we did before. And after we make the installation, we'll have to do a couple things. Um, one is to start SQL Server Agent on DB1, because when reporting services does alerts and subscriptions, it will use Agent, uh, just like it would in the native mode. And, and that, that needs to be running on DB1. And then we can provision subscriptions and alerts after we've started Agent. And then just finally, kind of a note that there is an execution account in reporting services. It is optional, but if you use that, then that account will need to be authorized to call claims to Windows service. So if you don't set it, then um, the service applications account will be used. So, uh, so I'm not going to set this, so this configuration will be fine without it, but let's say that we set the execution account. Um, that account would need to have uh, the same permissions essentially as the BI service does in terms of using claims to Windows. So here we are in central administration, and we'll go to manage service applications yet again. And our list is growing, and we're going to grow it a little bit more. So here we'll click on New and choose uh, SQL Server Reporting Services Service Application. You notice that it wasn't there before we installed the MSI. It is there now. And the process is very similar with the same kinds of dialog boxes. So here we give the service application a name. I'm just going to call this Reporting Services. I'm going to use the existing BI Services application pool. The database server is the same. I'm going to get rid of the GUID. If I was going to have more than one reporting services uh, service application, I would need to de define that. Windows is fine. Don't forget to associate with the web application so that the users will actually be able to use it. And click OK. When the configuration is successful, we'll get a dialog box telling us that. It says it's successfully created. That's great. So we'll click OK. And now we'll go over to the database server. And we're going to make sure that SQL Server Agent is started. So I'll go into SQL Server Configuration Manager. 
And when I look at services, I can see that agent is already started. It is already in automatic mode. So I'm good to go. So in this case, I didn't have to make any changes. So I'll go back to central admin and let's find reporting services and make our last configurations. And there are various settings I can change here. The ones that you might want to use are email settings, for example, to enable reporting services to deliver reports via email. I'm not going to set that in this lab environment, but it's very simple. Just tell it to use a server and tell it what the server is. Fairly, fairly simple. What I am going to use is this option of provision subscription alerts. So here I need to put in the name of uh, an administrator on the database server so that some scripts can be run against the server. So I'm going to put in my uh, my ID, which which has full control over that server. And that's it. The lack of an error message is interpreted as a success in that operation. So I now can go ahead and set alerts when I need to. The rest of these I don't need to worry too much about, although in a production environment I would want to back up the encryption key. But I'm not going to do that in this case.